All right, guys, welcome back here to LJ Reactions. I'll be your host, James. All right, so we got some videos up on the channel we just um, uploaded today. We have the Red Dead Redemption 2 gameplay trailer number two reactions up on the channel. Uh, we also have a reaction to uh, one of the guys that I know on YouTube. I did a reaction to his video of Conor McGregor vs. Khabib uh, trailer he put together, which is pretty dope. Reactions up on the channel. Make sure you guys check it out. And we have some other content released up this week. Um, this reaction to my... Uh, to JD from NY206, a couple of his videos that he did. Reaction to some of his contests up on the channel if you guys want to check that out too. Um, the video that I wanted to get to, done with for today. Because, again, we know we have that super, super showdown that's coming out this week, Saturday night. 5 a.m. in the morning here, East Coast time. It's going to be going up uh, live on the network. Um, this video wants to be is about the main event. Okay? The main event, in my opinion, which will be... It better be Undertaker versus Triple H. Like, you have no choice with what I think they're going to do. We'll get into that also here as we're going to predict the show. And we'll talk about the main event. But that should be the main event. Triple H versus Undertaker should be the main event. But what I think they're going to do and what's going to go down. So make sure you guys get your water, whatever you got to eat. Because it's going to be a long, long podcast here. So be back in a minute, guys. Why we put this shit together, you know what I mean? All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, the way I'm feeling about these unwanted, unnecessary shows that we have going on, the way I'm comparing it, again, guys, if you guys do not know, again, Monday Night Raw this past week was the lowest rated Raw of all time. It was the lowest rated Raw of all time, setting the trend from last week's show, which was the lowest rated Raw of all time. Now, again, guys, the way I'm putting these shows, what I'm thinking WWE's doing with these shows is, again, you got to put it away like it's YouTube, okay? You know the whole thing with YouTube where the ads are getting cut off or been cut off, okay? The way WWE's looking at it is just like that. They don't care about their ratings because guess what? They're getting like Patreon money. Like the YouTube fans who support their um, YouTubers, they give them money. They donate to them on Patreon, whatever they like doing. That's the way you got the Australian show and you have this Saudi Arabia stuff that's going on, man. They don't care about anything to do with ratings right now because, again... The way um, I listened to Joe Cronin's um, SmackDown review last night, and he said made another great point. SmackDown is going to be replacing going to be replacing UFC, okay? That was aired on the UFC on for Fox. The when they have the little um, fight night, the fight night events, they're replacing that, okay? What he was saying was that UFC was drawing like eight hundred thousand views on Fox, okay? So eight hundred thousand views, you know what I'm saying? It's not what Fox wanted, okay? SmackDown on an average basis draws about 2.1 million views. So, if you're looking, Fox is looking at it, it's like, oh, we're placing 800,000 views with 2.1 million from SmackDown. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they're going to be that too bitching then because they're going to be making more money and it works for both people. So, again, the point we're saying, oh, man, these ratings are going to keep dropping. Then what's going to happen? Again, they're making more money. They could give a flying fuck about what we think, right? They're making money from Saudi Arabia, from Australia, from new TV deals, uh, W Network, charities. They're making money. They could care less. Now, who is it hurting? It's hurting us. It's hurting us, us fans, because the product is unfreaking watchable, people, to the point where one of my friends... He has, doesn't give a flying fuck about what happens on Raw or SmackDown. He just watches the pay-per-views. That, I mean, if I was not a YouTuber reaction where I have to react for you guys and do these live streams for pay-per-views, I mean, it's hard to watch weekly weekly product for SmackDown for Raw. And the NXT, which I might discuss here in a future video, might start doing the NXT live reactions because that's a, that and the Mae Young Classic is the only thing that's, right, that's watchable on the network, or even watchable wrestling right now for WWE. So... They could care less about what we think. Now, moving forward with Raw, and then moving forward with the news I heard about today from from on the um, I put I put the on um, the the freaking what you call it? I put the letter I put the freaking news down below in the description right about Saudi Arabia about the Prince wanting the Rock that they threw a threw twenty million at the Rock that they want him to become want him to come over next year for the events they're gonna have next year they want the Rock to come over which. Again, this deal with Saudi Arabia is like a 10-year deal. So they want The Rock to come over next year. They want The Rock to be champion and come over. If The Rock is champion, he's going to get another $6 million. Now, do I think that is a real rumor? Yeah. You guys heard about last time, right? That the Prince wanted 
Ultimate Warrior. He wanted Earthquake, and he wanted some other, and he wanted um, yeah, Ultimate Warrior, and he wanted some other people. Like Vince, I say, oh, sorry, guys, but those those people are dead. He's like, oh, you know what I'm saying? He didn't know. So if he wants to rock, listen here. If they're getting Shawn Michaels to potential come out of rest, uh, retire to wrestle, I'm sure the Rock will clear his schedule for 26 million. Now, if that rumor is going to be true about them wanting the Rock to be champion, oh Lord, the Royal Rumble rumor about what JD said, repeat winner. That's for all but booked right now at this point then. Shoot. So, it's just crazy how this money, this, we see how money affects everything. About the current company status does not freaking matter. Money can r- just make people do whatever they want. They're getting Shawn Michaels to come out of retirement. He's been retired for about, what, eight years? And all of a sudden, Saudi Arabia comes and offers him $20 million or something like that. Boom, he's out of retirement. The whole storyline of him staying retired to respect The Undertaker is all but who cares, right? $20 million, I'll come out of retirement right now. Freak the respect of The Undertaker. Freak that storyline that we did. Here comes Shawn Michaels. Now, we're going to Australia Saturday night. There's preview predictions for this show. I mean, let's be honest, guys. What are you guys are? Like, are you going to be up at 5 a.m. watching this show? East Coast is 5 a.m. So West Coast is going to be 8 p.m. Are you guys going to be up to watch this? Am I going to be up to watch this at 5 a.m.? Honest opinion, I'll probably wake up at 7. At worst, I'll probably wake up at 7 because that's the time he's going to wake up to go walk my dog anyways. So the only matches that I have interest in, if you my realest opinion, of course, is Triple H versus Undertaker. <laughs> Those guys should be 100 years old. <laughs> they can still draw my interest, okay? They can be 100 years old. I still draw my interest. So Triple H versus Undertaker. Becky, Charlotte, and then AJ versus Joe. That's it. That's my interest. I don't care about Ronda and, and her and Nikki and Brie versus the Riot Squad. I can care less about that. Uh, well, hold up. We'll bring it back. Daniel Bryan versus The Miz, I do care about because I can ask for a number contender future. So I kind of do care about that because the storyline, which I want to continuous, I actually kind of do care about that. So there's four matches I care about. Okay? That's it. What's the heck is one with the Snapchat? My Snapchat blowing up. Um... Those are the four matches I care about. Now, let's pull up this freaking card. We can get these pre- preview predictions going, guys. Let's pull up your WWE Super Showdown. Super Showdown card. How many matches are even on this show? Again, is this going to be a four-hour freaking event anyways, man? Shoot. Freaking four-hour event. Okay, where's the freaking card? Okay, every match listed. Let's go. So there's ten matches listed for this freaking show. Oh, my God. Ten matches. This is going to be a four-hour freaking event. Here we go. Four-hour event. All right. Let's just get... We'll start with the first... We'll go... We'll work our way from the non-carry matches to the carry matches. That's the way we're going to work, people. So, apparently, Cedric Alexander, the Cruiserweight Champion, is facing against Buddy Murphy. Who? Buddy Murphy is not in 2K19. So, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? He's not in 2K19. Um... Cedric Alexander has been champion for six months, okay? He's been champion since WrestleMania, which, again, they gave the belt to Enzo Mori before, which Cedric should have had the belt before then. Dude, just go back to watch his match against Kota Ibushi. He should have been champion from the beginning. Um, Cedric versus Buddy Murphy. Do I believe Cedric's going to lose here? I would say no. Cedric's been champion for six months. I think the way, again, 205 Live, again, they did not fix this issue, which I don't know why they haven't fixed it. Again, JD, I think swear we think alike. I swear we think alike. Um, 205 Live should be down at NXT. No offense. I know Vince wants to have these guys on the road, whatever. But that does them no justice to have the show take place before SmackDown and have literally 25 people in attendance watching the match. That is so disrespectful. You should not be disrespecting Cedric Alexander or any... Listen, no wrestler should have to wrestle in front of like 50 or 25 people. Before the show starts. That is totally disrespectful. Now listen here. If you want to do this. Have them wrestle down at NXT. Have their match take place on the main pay-per-views. I would have no issue with that. If you want to do it that way. That way that, that could work. You could have them wrestle at NXT. Tape their shows. Have their matches defended on. Have their belts defended. Oh, belts. They don't have one belt. Have their Cruiserweight title defended on the main roster pay-per-views. That could work. That could work. Now, who do I see here winning? I see Cedric Alexander winning. I don't see him losing to Buddy Murphy, even though Buddy Murphy's been, since he's been down there doing 205 stuff, he's been looking fantastic. But I have Cedric winning. I don't see him losing to Buddy Murphy. Now, 
on to the New Day versus The Bar. Um, honest opinion, guys, again, like I said, I've hardly watched anything with Raw or SmackDown related, like, full length through. So, I don't even know what the hell is going on with the storyline. Okay. Let's be joking with you guys. I'm joking. I know what's going on. Okay. So, Cesaro and Sheamus end up winning the tag team tournament over, I believe they, who did they beat? I believe they beat it. Let me look, hold on, let me look down below. I think they beat Rusev Day. Yes, they beat Rusev Day. So, god damn, that was like two or three weeks ago. They had a decent, they had a good match to Rusev Day against the bar. I guess the bar. Um, honest opinion, they gave the belts to New Day only because, again, because of, I think it was Luke Harper. Luke Harper got, no, was it Luke Harper or Eric Rowan? It was Eric Rowan. Eric Rowan ended up, I think, touring, tearing his bicep or something like that. So, they were put out of commission. So, New Day stepped in, took over the belts from the, um, from the Bludgeon Brothers. Now, as far as SmackDown goes with their tag team division, you literally had only two options here. Either, either you push Rusev Day or you don't push Rusev Day. Either you push the bar or you don't push the bar. Because Sanity's totally been wasted. Again, another tag team has been wasted from NXT. Sanity's been wasted. Usos taking a step back because, again, they had a pretty good uh, reign last year. And then that leaves you with... That leaves you with... Who else? <laughs> I mean, that leaves you with who else? I mean, you could have put Ty Dillinger and um, freaking, who was it? Ty Dillinger and who was it? Who was Ty Dillinger and, and R-Truth? But you dropped R-Truth to put him with Carmella. So it uh, ends up that messes up that tag team. So you're kind of left with, there's no more really tag teams on SmackDown, really. It's like only four teams. This is the freaking New Day, The Bar, Sandy, and The Usos. That's it. So you kind of were forced with your hand here. I see the bar winning here because, again, the New Day stepped in for the Bludgeon Brothers. They had a couple, what, it's been like two months reign with the belts. So, I see the bar beating the New Day because, again, the bar have been doing nothing. You have no other... Listen, if the New Day beats the bar, who else is there to face? They've beaten Sanity. They've beaten the Usos. Who else is there for them to face? <laughs> you got my pin? You got my drift, people? There's no other... There's literally no other tag team. That's why, again, I agree with JD. Tag team should be on one show. Just like the women should be on... Actually, no, the women, the way they've been booked lately on SmackDown. Ah, whatever. I guess you, well, you can't do it now with Ronda Rousey. You couldn't put them all in one show. Because Ronda would run through them like chopped liver. So, but the tag teams could be on one show. Because, again, you have, what? Four teams on SmackDown. You have three teams on Raw. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I'm going with the bar. They have no choice but to go with the bar. Now, we move on to... Listen here, guys. I'm not going to lie. My friend loves... I'm not going to shout out his name in the video, but... Because <laughs> other reasons. But he loves him some Peyton Royce. Now, again, Peyton Royce is freaking gorgeous. I'm not going to lie. Um, the Icon X versus Naomi and they've... Oh, my God. Jesus Christ, Oscar. We feared this day would happen where you're irrelevant. And nobody gives a freaking crap about you. And to the point where I don't care about this match either. Like, how do you go from the woman being undefeated on NXT, having the longest reign on NXT... Comes to the main roster, has the longest reign, and you feed her to Charlotte, and then you feed her to Carmella, and she's a total waste. Wow, Vince. You wasted Asuka. <laughs> I'm going with the Iconics. They're in, uh, I'm going, they're in, they live in Australia. I see them turning, freaking, let's turn another Japanese wrestler heel, right? It worked for Nakamura. Let's turn Asuka heel. I see them turning Asuka, he, Asuka heel. So I'm going with the Iconics, and Peyton Royce is gorgeous ass self. So, Iconics win here. On to the next match here. Our boy John Cena, which is, again, he's filming a movie, if you guys do not know. I think he's filming a movie in China, I believe, with um, with um, Jackie Chan. So, that's what John Cena's been doing since WrestleMania. I've been filming a movie. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> do you guys see John Cena losing? <laughs> I don't. So, it's John Cena and Bobby Lassie versus Kevin Owens and Elias. I see Kevin Owens taking the pin here from Bobby Lashley. So, I mean, what else you guys have been talking about the match? Seeing as I've been on Raw or SmackDown since WrestleMania. <laughs> factors into nothing. <laughs> Cena and Lashley win. It factors into nothing, people. It really does. All right, here. A match we care about. Let's break this down completely, guys. All right. So, Daniel Bryan versus The Miz. Now, what did I feel about the feud? How did I feel about the feud so far? Again, this has been kind of rushed. Now you're into a point where you had Daniel Bryan lose to Shelton Benjamin on SmackDown. So you kind of booked yourself into a point now. 
You lost to The Miz at SummerSlam. You lost to The Miz at Hell in a Cell. He loses to Shelton Benjamin on SmackDown. At some point, Daniel Bryan has to win somewhere. Now, again, if these rumors of The Rock winning the Rumble are fucking true... You actually, you have no, you have no point but to give Daniel Bryan the win. We will find a lot out about this show with this match here. Because if The Rock is going to win the Rumble, Daniel Bryan would have to win here, right? Because again, he lost SummerSlam, Hell in a Cell, and then loses to Shelton Benjamin on SmackDown. At some point, Daniel Bryan has to get some type of momentum back. You know what I'm saying? So again, let's just go, we're going to go with two options here. Let's go with the first option. First option is Daniel Bryan beats The Miz here, okay? Again, this is a future WWE title shot. Okay, it's a future title shot. So, if Brian beats The Miz here, what would you do? Okay, we all know that the next show will be Crown Jewel. Crown Jewel will be the next freaking TV show. So, would you do a rematch with the Daniel Bryan versus The Miz? No, you would not do that. Because the next show, it's a future title shot. So, that way, I think if this was going to continue going to option A. Brian would face, let's just say, Samoa Joe. Daniel Bryan versus Samoa Joe. Would The Miz come out and cost Daniel Bryan that title shot? You could do that. Then you would fast forward to Survivor Series. You go to Survivor Series with the rumors of today of them going away with the champions versus champions and potentially going with Team Angle versus Team Corbin, which who would give a flying fuck to watch that shit? Okay, if they're going to go with that shit, then that would be you would have... Uh, Daniel Bryan, The Miz, Samoa Joe, and AJ Styles in a fatal four-way for the belt. Could you do that at Survivor Series? And then out of nowhere, the let's say the, the Miz wins the belt at Survivor Series. You go along with that plan, okay? Then you say Daniel Bryan's like, okay, I still have not got my one-on-one shot back, okay? This guy screwed me at um, he screwed me at um. The Crown Jewel show. He didn't pin me at Survivor Series. Then you go on to TLC. Okay. Fuck it. Another fatal four-way at TLC. Then The Miz wins again at TLC. Dan Bryan's like, oh, fuck. Again, this guy wins, but he doesn't pin me again. So then you say SmackDown. You go ahead. You throw Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe in a triple threat match for the number of contendership against The Miz. Daniel Bryan wins that match. Then you have the Bryan versus the Miz at the Royal Rumble for the title. You see how he's going full circle? Again, the Miz finds a way to cheat to beat Daniel Bryan. Then this point, Daniel Bryan's like, fuck, okay. This dude has beaten me again and again. He keeps getting the upper hand. Then you go to Elimination Chamber. To the point the Miz can say, Paige, I've beaten Bryan how many times? How many times have I beaten Daniel Bryan to the point where this guy does not get another shot? Then Paige says, you know what, Miz, I kind of agree with you. You've beaten Bryan at every, every turn. You've beaten him. We'll give Daniel Bryan one more shot. Again, since The Rock is going to fucking rumble, you won't, you won't need to have Roman Reigns. You would have Roman Reigns defend his belt because The Rock would have won the rumble. So the Miz wouldn't have to defend his belt. Because, again, the way WWE works these things around is that the winner of the Rumble, that person who's a champion, usually defends his belt. The other brand would not defend the belt. You get, number, you get a number of contender person. Again, so then you go with Brian against other five against other five people, number one contendership in the Elimination Chamber. Then you have Brian win the Elimination Chamber. Again, one-on-one against the Miz at WrestleMania. This time, this time, you will get a real winner because... You need a special guest referee. Dun da da da! Drum roll, people. Who is a special guest referee? Now, there only could be one special guest referee. You guys, know who would be the perfect special guest referee for this match? Stone Cold Steve Austin, people, would be the perfect guest referee. Would be the perfect special guest referee. Now, that way you have a clear cut winner. You want Dan Bryan to be put over again, over 100,000 people in New York City. Stone Cold raising Daniel Bryan's fucking hand, doing the fucking yes chant, and then drinking a beer from Stone Cold? Come on, people. That would make perfect sense. A whole year circle. That way the Miz could not run and hide and cheat again. Special referee Stone Cold. Daniel Bryan versus the Miz for W title. Come on, man. That way at least the Rock and Roman Reigns would not overshadow a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? Stone Cold special guest referee. Come on, people. That works. WWE, I just wrote a whole year storyline for you for Daniel Bryan and the fucking Miz. 
I just wrote it for you. Now, if you want, if you want a plan B, say if you go with plan B, the Miz wins the fucking number contendership, right? You can flip flop other things here and there. You could have Dan Bryan say, you know what? <sighs> the Miz beat me again and again and again. You know what? I just don't feel I'm up to it anymore, people. You can say, you know what? We'll give Dan Bryan some time off. Make him let him rethink himself. Damn it. Do I really want to still do this? I, can I beat The Miz? Can I beat The Miz? So Brian takes some time off. Uh, the Miz ends up winning the title. Let's just say TLC. He ends up winning the title at TLC. Triple threat match against AJ, against Samoa Joe. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Then at the Royal Rumble, The Miz is running his fucking mouth. He's like, you know what, guys? I beaten Samoa Joe. I beaten AJ Styles. I beaten, oh my God, ESPN. Who cares? I beaten this people and this people here. Who's going to face me at the Royal Rumble? Then you can kick off Daniel Bryan, The Miz at the Rumble. <sighs> Pay me, Vince. Let's move on. Who I think is going to win the match here? <sighs> this is a tough one to call people because, again, it's it just depends this tells a lot. This really, this match here, I think, really would tell a lot if they're going to think The Rock will win the Rumble. Because if you're really going to think Dan Bryan will win the Rumble, then you should go with The Miz, right? My gut is telling me this, people. It's telling me this here. Do I think The Rock is going to be winning the Royal Rumble? Do I think The Rock is going to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania? <sighs> Again, it depends. What's John Cena going to do? Is John Cena become a, a part-time guy where he doesn't even wrestle hardly anymore? That really tells a lot, too. Again, if Cena is not going to be a full-timer anymore, where does that go with John Cena? <sighs> Damn, my gut is telling me The Rock will win the Rumble. It really, my gut is telling me that's what Vince wants to do. <laughs> it really does tell me that. So I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Daniel Bryan beats The Miz. But again, in Australia, that's when Bryan gets his, his momentum back. Is in Australia. <sighs> I'm going with Daniel Bryan. I really am. I mean, again... The Mrs. beat him at every other time. At every other, at every other time, I'm going with Daniel Bryan. I am. But hey, again, if the Miz wins, that tells us a lot too that Bryan might win the Rumble. But I'm going with Daniel Bryan because I think The Rock will really will win the Rumble. I really do at this point, man. All right. Next here, AJ versus Samoa Joe. The best heel in WWE right now as we speak is. Samoa Joe. Okay, the main roster is Samoa Joe. Tomas Ciampa is doing great work at NXT too. But the best heel on the main roster is the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe. Now, if you listen to AJ Styles' promo from SmackDown, he said, bury you six feet deep. Again, this is a, what, a no DQ match. AJ versus Joe. Again, this will not be the end here. Because we all know, again, if you guys do not read the dirt sheets... Joe versus Styles is going to take place <clears throat> on Raw on SmackDown 1000 again. Okay? AJ wins here. Joe wins at SmackDown 1000. I'm just putting it out there right now. AJ keeps the belt because right now W2K is coming out this week. You want to keep AJ's champion because he's what? On the cover as the WWE Champion. Again, it's just smart business. Again, I'm saying AJ wins here. He loses the belt at SmackDown 1000. That way you can speed up the profile of Joe versus Brian. Okay? I'm going to AJ to keep the belt for now. He'll lose at SmackDown 1000. That's just quick. That's just plain and simple easy, guys. It's not hard to book that. <laughs> now, on to Stone Cold Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair. Now, I just say this has been the best thing about SmackDown. Charlotte and Becky Lynch. You could say that. Stone Cold Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair. Now, again, we got we got to start thinking here, people. WrestleMania is not really that far away. It really is not. If you already look at it, it's already October. Mania is in April. It's not that far away, people. It really is not that far away. So, you got to start thinking about what are you going to do at WrestleMania. Now, we all know that they want to do what? Ronda versus Charlotte WrestleMania. That is this. No. Is it fucking raining? Damn, it's raining. Um, again, they want to do Charlotte versus Ronda at WrestleMania. So you got to start thinking about how you're going to transition people to other shows. So I'm going to go with right now. I'm still picking Becky to keep the belt for now because, again, I think we're all picking Charlotte to win the, the Royal Rumble, right? I don't think anybody's not picking Charlotte not to win the Royal Rumble <laughs> at this point. The Women's Royal Rumble. So I'm picking Becky because, again... What are you going to do with, again, 
the Rumble is in January, people. It's not that far away either, too. So you got to start saying, what are you going to do with certain superstars? How are you going to transition certain superstars to other things to do? Because right now, let's just say Becky, Becky beats Charlotte right now, okay? You're pushing Becky as a what? As a tweener. You're not pushing her as a full face baby face. You're pushing her as a tweener. So let's just go with this plan here. You turn if they're gonna turn Oscar heel, who the hell is gonna feud with Oscar? You're gonna feud you're gonna feud Naomi with Oscar for now? You could do that. But at some point, Oscar would have to get her payback on Charlotte, right? So you could say you're gonna do that too. But then who are you gonna put Oscar who are you gonna put Becky with? Are you going to do Becky with Charlotte for a couple more months? And then you're going to transition to uh, um, Charlotte versus um, Asuka? You could do that. So there's other things that we can do with these certain people. That It's not that hard to book. I mean, I don't know why they make this shit so hard for themselves. You know what I'm saying? You can do, again, Asuka versus Charlotte at some point down the line. You get Asuka gets a re, a he, um, her revenge as a heel against Charlotte. Then you can push Becky Lynch some more. And then you can bring up... Tony Storm, maybe? You could bring up Tony Storm. Oh my gosh. You could bring up Tony Storm, maybe? Tony Storm versus Becky Lynch at, I don't know, WrestleMania? Vince, maybe Tony Storm versus Becky Lynch at WrestleMania? Just throwing that out there, Vince? <laughs> That's my dream, man. That's my dream. I fucking love Tony Storm, man. <laughs> I love that girl. But, I mean, again, like, who else would you have face against Becky Lynch? Because <laughs> there's like, I mean, and from now to then, who are you going to bring up? You know what I'm saying? Right now, Tony Storm would be... I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but you already probably know. But Tony Storm would be doing stuff at NXT UK. But then again, man, who else is on SmackDown for Becky Lynch to face? If you're going to put Charlotte versus Ronda at WrestleMania, who in the hell is Becky Lynch going to face at WrestleMania? Who? Who? You see what I'm saying? I'm going to bring somebody up. So I'm going Becky to keep the belt for now. Actually, I'm going back to keep the belt all the way to fucking WrestleMania. All right, people. Let's get to this next bullshit here. This shit here that really turns my fucking stomach. It really does, man. Let's just, let's just put it out here. Sasha Banks. Is she pregnant or is she not pregnant? Is she injured or is she not injured? Bailey. Who gives a fuck about Bailey? Ruby Riot. Who gives a fuck about you? At freaking Revolution. Was it? It was Evolution. At Evolution. Ronda Rousey is going to be facing Nikki Bella. <laughs> over Sasha Banks. Over Bailey. Over Ruby Riot. Hell, Vince, if you really wanted to push... If you really wanted to freaking push Ronda Rousey, why didn't you just throw Trish Stratus at her? Listen, I know people are complaining about Bliss versus Trish Stratus. I am too. But if you really wanted to build Ronda Rousey... Ronda versus Trish as a main event. Listen, I don't think many people would have been like really that complaining. But if you wanted to build Ronda Rousey, let's see. Nikki Bella or Trish Stratus. A Hall of Famer. Not a Hall of Famer. Like, you could have put Nikki. Nikki could have came back and faced Sasha Banks. Could have came back and faced Ruby Riot. Could have came back and faced Bliss. Could have came back and faced whoever else you wanted to do. Nikki, no offense, I love you, girl. I have a fucking picture with you. I got a picture with you. You're kind of taking a picture with me. I love you, girl. But damn it. <laughs> Main event of the pay-per-view, Nikki versus Ronda. Hell no. No. Even though it's going to happen, I'm just saying, you could have put Trish against Ronda. If you really wanted to build Ronda Rousey up. Ronda versus Nikki does not scream, me building and care for Ronda Rousey. Trish versus Ronda, a Hall of Famer where credibility screams build to me. But the match here, Ronda and them are going to win. And then, again, like I was saying, how are you going to put Brie and you're going to turn her heel when Dan Bryan's a baby face? How's that going to work? How's that going to work with her? Brie being a heel, Bryan being a baby face. And they know their husband and wife. How's that going to work? You know what I'm saying? But anyways... Ronda and her team are going to win. Nikki and Brie and Evely will turn heel on Ronda Rousey, whether it's at Australia or on Raw. Either or, Ronda's team's winning. Now, the last two matches of Beaver, yeah, these are the last two matches. Yep, these are the last two matches. Braun Strowman and the Dogs of War versus The Shield. 
there's there, 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 there really anything to talk about, people. You saw what happened on Monday, right? Ido's going to win. Next match. And no, no, no heel turn from Dean Ambrose either. Next match. The Undertaker with Kane in his corner versus the game. Ah, the game. Ah, Triple H and the bald head of Shawn Michaels. <laughs> um, again, people. I see Triple H winning. Again, sorry guys for my mistake. Again, Triple H has never beaten The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Okay, my bad, people. I didn't mean Triple H has never beaten The Undertaker at all. Triple H has never beaten The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Okay, the way this, I think this is going to go. Again, this is cut and dry, people. We'll, we'll know more Saturday night. Triple H has Shawn Michaels in his corner. Undertaker has Kane in his corner. I see Triple H beating The Undertaker. Okay? Crown Jewel, DX versus the Brothers of Destruction, plain and simple. After that, who the fuck knows? If you're going to be doing Team Angle versus Team Corbin, and you're scrapping away with the champion versus champion, you're scrapping all that away. There's no need for Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels in Survivor Series. There's no need for that to be at Royal Rumble. So how are you going to book Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker all the way to WrestleMania. How are you going to book that? How are you going to book that? Could you have, after the Saudi Arabia show, Undertaker comes out and says, Shawn Michaels, the Brother of Destructions took down D-Generation X, but there's something deep down inside that still has my stomach turning. Ah, that is me not getting my revenge fully on you, HBK. I want you to come out here face to face against me right now. Now it comes. Woo! Woo! Shawn Michaels, yada, yada, yada. They go back and forth. They say it. They say it. Shawn Michaels says, Undertaker, I want to come out of retirement to face you one more time at WrestleMania. The last time ever. Me versus you, Undertaker. Winner takes all. Winner takes all. The loser is he retired forever. That's it. Done. Signed, sealed, delivered. Taker versus Michaels. Booked at WrestleMania. What else do you need to do, people? What else would you need to do? <laughs> it's not that hard, Vince. It really is not that hard. So, again, I see Triple H and Shawn Michaels winning. Let's go through these predictions again. I have Triple H beating The Undertaker. Dogs of War losing to Roman Reigns. Of course, you know that shit's going to happen. Ronda's team winning. Becky Lynch beating Charlotte. AJ beats Joe. I have Daniel Bryan beating The Miz. Lashley and Cena winning. Uh, Iconics beating Asuka and Naomi. Have The Bar beating The New Day. And I have Alexander keeping his belt against Blake, against Buddy Murphy. The one thing you see from my predictions, there are not a lot of heels winning. So, I, usually Vince likes to throw us a curveball. So, you know what? I'm going to change one of my predictions. I'm having the Dogs of War beating the Shield. Because, again, there, I don't think I have a heel person winning a single match. Wow, that is freaking crazy. All baby faces clean sweep. <laughs> I mean, Vince usually likes to throw us one curveball. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think he'll throw us one curveball. I think, okay, change my prediction. The Dogs of War beat the Shield. Changing one of my predictions. Because, again, Vince likes to throw us one curveball at least. So, I'm going with that one curveball. Again, guys, don't forget to like the video. Comment down below. Do you agree with any of my predictions? Do you see any of my predictions being wrong? Comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my um, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. They're all down below. I'm actually more active on Twitter and Snapchat more than the Instagram. But I might start uploading some more, more content on the Instagram. But I'm more active on Twitter and Snapchat. So, catch you guys tomorrow for the Venom reaction. And also for the unboxing for the Woo edition of Ric Flair. Catch you guys tomorrow. Have a blessed, safe night, people. See you guys. Put this shit together, you know what I mean?